I want to thank uh, particularly our friends in the media for being here. It's an exciting day. Uh, as you can appreciate, th these days don't come around uh, every day here in our athletic program or for our university. And uh, before I get too far into my, my comments, certainly want to thank a number of people in the room. Certainly want to thank our staff. Uh, just so grateful to them for, for all the hard work that they do. A lot of people don't realize we have over 300 staff members now working in the athletic program. And uh, they're so committed in, in the work that they put in day in and day out to trying to advance the mission of this great institution and certainly the tradition of fighting Illini athletics. Uh, I want to recognize a few campus guests in particular. Uh, Kim Kidwell is here with us, the Dean of our College of Aces, been a, a tremendous friend and colleague. We came on board about the same time and have really enjoyed uh, getting to know her and, and seeing the tremendous leadership that she's providing to a very important college uh, here at our university. Uh, Jim Moore is with us, the president of the foundation. Some of our other foundation staff members are with him. As we all know, we are now very much in the midst of a, a very aggressive uh, capital campaign for the institution. Uh, we've had the opportunity to be together on some different uh, occasions and talk about uh, what that looks like for the athletic program, $300 million target uh, to, to raise here over the next number of years. And uh, grateful to Jim for his leadership and his team uh, for the work that they continue to do on behalf of this uh, great university. We've also had the occasion to be together and talk at length about our vision for Illinois football and the opportunity that we have to take this football program and develop it into not only a power within our conference, but a power within our national landscape. That, that's the opportunity that sits in front of us. And the, and the formula to do that is not a secret. It starts with great people. And I mentioned some of the people who are around the football program today, but certainly our coaching staff, Coach Smith, has done a fantastic job surrounding himself with great assistant coaches, support staff, people who are over there working every day to make Illinois football great. And then it continues with our student athletes. We just came from a meeting with our team, had the chance to introduce them to Stu, uh, and, and certainly they are hard, hard at work this time of year uh, in the weight room running going through drills, getting themselves ready for spring football. Uh, everything culminates in the fall, but there's a lot that goes into preparing for a Big Ten football season. Our guys are uh, very much in the midst of that as we go. The next ingredient in that formula is, is supporting those people with great resources. And that has been our focus here over the last two years, making sure that, that whether it's our facilities, whether it's our recruiting budgets, whether it's the way we travel, the way we look, we have the, the things that we need to field a competitive program. And certainly that hasn't been evidenced in any greater way than with the creation of our new facility, the Football Performance Center. I hope you've all had a chance to be, spend a couple minutes across the street. Uh, the dirt's getting moved every day. The holes are getting a little bit bigger. Uh, and we're excited about the way that that facility is starting to take shape. It will be an absolute game changer for us uh, to, to again walk through our current building just now reminded of some of the limitations that we have, some of the challenges that that building presents, and, and just more excited than ever about the solutions that this new building presents and, and what that will look like. And certainly, in order to recognize that kind of progress, we have to find great strategic partners. We have to find people who share in that vision for what Illinois football can and should be and are prepared to spend their time, their talents, and in many cases, their resources with us to invest in the progress, the development, the growth of our student athletes, of our staff, and of our program. And certainly, that is where Stu and, and Nancy Levnick enter the conversation. Uh, Stu is a tried and true Illini. It was fun for me to stand in front of the team today and talk about his history. He arrived here on our campus in 1972 as a walk-on studying forestry. And he grew into a dominant football player on our offensive line by 1975. He was a team captain. He was the offensive MVP. He was an all Big Ten selection. After he left here, he actually was drafted, something that I can't claim to have done, uh, by the Baltimore Colts, I believe. And, uh, and then had the, the great opportunity to move into the corporate world and spent uh, many, many years in a variety of roles at Caterpillar. He has lived all over uh, the country and all over the world. Uh, and most recently, he was a group president uh, for CAT until he retired just a few years ago. And, and Stu was one of the first people I met 
when I took this position. He's grown into a tremendous colleague, friend, ally, uh, and he's one of the first people to pick up the phone, shoot you a text. Uh, he has been an unbelievable confidant uh, and, and friend as we've worked through these first two years here on campus and, and just can't thank him enough uh, for, for sharing in our vision and certainly his commitment to, to our program. So it's only fitting, I, I think, that as we started to look at this project, that the first gift, the first major gift and support of this effort came from Stu and Nancy. Stu uh, understood what the need was. He understood how life-changing this experience can be for our student athletes. And he and his wife, Nancy, who's unable to be with us today, uh, stepped up in a, obviously a very, very significant way uh, with a $5 million gift. And, and that, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say, has set the tone here over the last many months for a number of other gifts that have come in, and we're excited to share those with you over the months ahead. But uh, really, it, it wouldn't have started the way that it did, and it wouldn't certainly have continued the way that it has if not for the tremendous generosity of, of Stu and Nancy, and we're very grateful to both of them. So uh, thanks again for being here today. Exciting day for us, and I'll bring up uh, Coach Smith to share a few words. Thank you, Josh. As Josh mentioned, uh, a few minutes ago, we had a chance uh, to let Stu get in front of our team. You know, when we're getting ready to start spring football practice here before long, and when you're putting in plays, it always helps if you have a visual, uh, you know, a perfect play to show the players how you would like for it to look. And as we talk about being a student athlete here at the University of Illinois, whenever we can bring back one of our own and for our guys to see, Here's a guy that wore the same uniform I did. And for some of our players, we have a few of our walk-on players that have earned scholarships. Chase McLaughlin, Bobby Walker have earned scholarships. For them to see someone that's gone through the same path as they have, uh, with Stu being a walk-on and, and as Josh said, ended up being MVP of our football team. So it's always good when you have a chance to come back and talk to your team. Stu, uh, thank you. Uh, we just finished up another successful recruiting uh, class that we're going to bring in. Just think about what we'll be able to do uh, once, of course, we get this new facility there. So it's great for the recruits coming in, but for our current players, uh, it means a lot. So thank you. We're excited to acknowledge what you've done and just not with your gift, but uh, just being the guy uh, behind the scenes told the team about this past year after tough loss, uh, got a telephone call. I mean, it's Stu. Hang in there. We're on the right path. We'll eventually get this done. We will eventually get this done. So, again, Stu, thank you for everything you've done for us. And uh, I guess, Josh, we'll bring up Stu right now. Thank you. You know, uh, I got a little tour around uh, Memorial Stadium, and as Coach Smith said, I get a chance to spend time with, uh, with the team, which is really cool. I hadn't been in there since I left, and needless to say, a whole lot of changes. But if I close my eyes and then open them, I'm still being interviewed by Lauren Tate. <laughs> so, that, you know, <laughs> this isn't... <laughs> You know, this isn't totally uh, unexpected. You know, I kind of know how to do this. Uh, you're probably, you know, it's, this is wonderful to have a celebration like this, and I, I really appreciate it, Josh and Coach Smith and all of you, really. But to me, it really seemed like kind of second nature. Uh, I got a lot out of this place, and uh, in, in a lot of ways didn't have a whole lot of expectations when I came here. I, I wanted to get the best education I could, and the University of Illinois is a first-class academic institution, and so that was my first priority. Secondly, I had a dream of playing Big Ten football, and I wasn't heavily recruited, or at all, really. And uh, in the end, I got a chance to do both. And uh, the lessons I learned on the gridiron, as well as northeast of there, up in the academic world of the University of Illinois, were lessons that really sustained me through my career. And, uh, and I, that was the message I gave the team today. I said, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna build relationships with your teammates, you're playing an exciting sport, and it's going to be a great experience, but don't give up on the academic side. And that's, for most of you, 
that's where the really value out of this experience is going to come from. And those experiences you'll take with you the rest of your life, not only friendships, but lessons in determination and commitment and accountability. That's the basis of leadership. Um, you're probably going to ask me later on, why now? Um, well, I'm retired. I, I, I have the means to do this. But I've always been a big supporter of the university for the reasons I just described. I really believe in the student-athlete experience. As I look at my teammates, and I also mentioned this to the team, we've all been successful in one way or another, not necessarily financially, but just in life. Uh, I look at the 10 of us that we have stayed pretty close. Um, you know, they're all good fathers. They're uh, deeply involved in their communities or their churches. They're all really good, solid citizens. And that all came from the experience they extracted while on campus here at the University of Illinois, playing a sport and getting an education. And that has taught me over the years that there's real value in this. And I'm really a firm believer in it. I think the other thing that uh, has really impressed me of late, uh, while I've always been loyal to the loyal alumni and loyal to the university, is the leadership from the board through the administration, Tim Colleen, uh, Chancellor Jones, to Josh's leadership at DIA, to the coaching staff. I mean, we've got you know a world-class leadership team here, and they are all aligned. They recognize that it's as important for Illinois to be first in the classroom as it is to be first on the field. And the, the investments that we're making here are going to lead us in that direction. I'm confident of it. You know, it's, it's all about vision, execution, and building a legacy. And as I look around here, that's exactly what we're going to do. It's going to take a while. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. But the signs I see tell me that we're pointing in the right direction, and, and we will win. And I'm, I'm happy to play a role in any way I can to further that cause. So Nancy and I are, are big fans. Um, I do send a text once in a while to, to Coach Smith or Josh, but I'm in no way involved in, in running the program. That's their job. But it, it, for what it's worth, I'm a, I'm a loyal, uh, loyal alumni, and I'm happy to do anything I can do to help this institution get back where it belongs. So with that, I think we'll uh, take some questions. Stu, um, yeah. what gets you bought into Josh and Lovey uh, individually about the future of this program? Well, I, I think, as, as I said, I think leadership, number one. When I first met Josh, I'd seen him play. I knew about him a little bit. But to me, the experience he had, which is similar to the one I had, he's been here. He's an Illini. You know, he played over there, same place I did. I was a student athlete, you know. Lawyer, he worked in the DIA before before he left here, and then I think uh, I'm sure he had a lot of opportunities. But he, I think this is the one he always wanted. When I first met him, I could see that he was he was really he was all in. Coach Smith, you know I don't know Coach Smith as well. I didn't play for him, but I sure watched him from a distance and admired. You know this is a first class coach, and I'll give you a little story about him. He came to visit me uh, when we were talking about this. It was probably about a year ago. Sadly, he had to wrestle my dog. <laughs> As we, we were carrying on this conversation, but uh, I asked him, I said, well, what's your, you know, just player to coach, give me your, uh, what's your philosophy? He said, Stu. I said, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> it's real simple. He said, first you, build the, first you build the man, then you build the player. And that says it all right there. That says who Levy Smith is. And so you take the combination of these two guys, we got a winner, as Rayleigh really used to say. Sure. Compare what, what they're going to have now as opposed to what you had when you played here. <laughs> yeah, you, you wouldn't believe. Uh, we were talking about winter conditioning, and I interrupted the winter conditioning, which I think is part of the reason that the team was so happy to see me, you know. Uh, but it's, I was telling Josh, we had winter conditioning when I was here, believe it or not, and it was under the west side bleachers. And so at, at one time, Lauren, you probably remember this, there were tennis courts under the west main balcony over there, and we'd take the nets down. It was about 60 yards of concrete, and that's where we do all our winter drills, under the bleachers. So the weight room was under the south uh, horseshoe, and I don't think it was heated, which meant it didn't get a lot of use. So it's night and day, totally different deal. But it was all relative. You know, I think today there's a bit of an arms race, I think, in sports. It's just the reality. It's the, it's, you know, that's your table stakes. And Illinois needs to be there. And I think from what I can see, uh, the investments we're making here are prudent. 
but they're going to put us in a first class position to not only recruit but develop big time college athletes. Ten of you have kind of stuck together over the years. Explain yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, when you leave here, you're uh, it's a family. You know, you you share things. Uh, you go through difficult times, physically, emotionally, and you become brothers in a lot of ways. So, uh, you know, we've we've just all stayed in touch. We see each other from time to time. Um, tailgates. If I'm in Chicago, we'll connect. Um, if I'm out in Colorado and somebody's in the area, they'll come and see me, and we just we just have a tight group of, uh, of, uh, you know, old teammates. Sure, a common experience. A few names. Oh yeah, some of the guys. Paul Yadrin, Ed Murray, Ty McMillan, Chuck Jesse, uh, Ron White, uh, Steve Green. I mean, there's a Bob Standring, John Man. Um, and you know, I could go on and on. There's just a bunch of them. There's probably actually more than ten, but ten of us are pretty, pretty close. Academic side, which, as you said, is just as important. Can you talk about some of your favorite classes and professors? You know, it's yeah, it's a, it's a great story. Um, yeah, I was my my parents raised me that academics are always first. It was always you can play all the sports you want, but you better be a decent student. And I would say I was a good student. I wasn't a great student down here. And one of the reasons is that it's a, it's a really good excuse, so tell me how I'm doing, but this is such, this university has got such a wealth of educational opportunities. I really couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to do, to be quite honest. <clears throat> so I enrolled in engineering. So I was in engineering for two years. I was gonna be a civil engineer. My dad was an engineer and I thought, well, I was good at science, okay, I can do that. But then I, I don't know, I just got tired of it. After I got through all the hard courses, and uh, I decided to, uh, I like life science, I like science. So I got an ecology and I thought maybe about pre-med and I did some bio and so, but the thing was I could essentially dial the, you know, spin the dial every semester and, and get into something that interested me. As a result, I was, I got to be pretty much of a generalist and uh, uh, I, w I graduated in forest management. Um, I wanted to, the idea was I was gonna get an MBA and then go to work for a company like Weyerhaeuser International Paper. And when I got done playing football, I got hurt in, in, uh, at the end of training camp in, in Baltimore. I went back for one more year of graduate school, and then I decided it's time for me to go to work. And so forest industries weren't hiring, and, um, and I applied to adjacent industries. And as luck would have it, Caterpillar, the hometown company, gave me the best offer. That's how I wound up there. I mean, it's a lot of luck, really, in how I wound, I wound up there. Um, but th the message I always give everybody is this is such a big place. Uh, I mean, take advantage of the wealth and the breadth of educational opportunities here. It's unbelievable. One of the things we talk about in, in uh, general really to this, we're a pretty humble crowd here in the Midwest. When you go to Japan or China and you say you graduated from the University of, University of Illinois, it's like E.F. Hutton just spoke. I mean, people go, wow, that is a renowned university. Here in the States, it's like, yeah, well, you're in the Big Ten, you're in another school. I mean, this is a fantastic university. And I, t I think in a lot of respects, we need to do a better job of telling our story. So I know I'm going on and on here, but I just feel strongly about it. And I, re I really do believe the combination of a winning, dominant athletic program combined with the academics will really set us apart. Sorry for the long answer. Do you remember any particular professor? Oh, yeah. Ted Yoakum. He kind of encouraged me to uh, explore the business aspects of the science. Uh, and he was kind of my advisor my last two years I was down here. He, I mean, these guys are all long deceased now, but he was he was tremendous, tremendous teacher, great confidant. Okay, right, hey guys, thank you. Hey, coach, come on up. Hey, Howard. <laughs>